Okay, we'll see you off you go. Ah, lovely. Hi, everybody. Well, I thought what we'd do, my name, well, first of all, I'll give you a bit of an introduction. My name's Steve, Steve Park from Parkour Personal Training. And I think I've met most of yourselves uh, back last year, literally about a year, maybe a little bit longer ago, when I came to your training, um, or came to the leisure centre and we did some training and had a bit of a chat. And I thought, obviously, with everything going on, because this that was obviously before COVID kicked in and the lockdown and so on. So I thought I'd get a bit of um, bit, have a bit of a catch up. So sort of catch up with each other to see how we're doing, what we're finding difficult with sort of the lockdown, what we enjoy with the lockdown as well, because there's certain parts that people will enjoy. Um, so just have a bit of a catch up with each of us individually. Um, and also look at a few little stress relievers that I found that have helped me. Um, I think knowing some of yourselves, you're probably already doing them anyway, but little things that might help um, some of the other group as well in regards to sort of dealing with stress. Um, and I have a, a little breathing technique that I use when I get anxious or nervous um, called box breathing. So I thought we could do a little bit of that just to sort of, uh, as a way of sort of easing ourselves down. So whenever we do feel anxious or that anxiety starting to raise, we can sort of use this box breathing it's something nice and simple and it really works for me when I start to get a little bit anxious and nervous and sort of cramped up with, with their concerns. So I thought we could do that. And then right at the end, I've got a little workout for everybody. So it's some simple steps, some st simple moves that you can do with no equipment. It should get you very sweaty and very hot and everybody should have a good night's sleep at the end of it. Um, so that's sort of the plan we've got for, for today. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy it, it'll be interesting, and hopefully a few ideas will come from that as well. Um, so the first thing I thought we'd do is ask everybody, um, a, well, a question or two. So it was to ask everybody um, what they're enjoying about the lockdown um, or, or being at home and what, do they not enjoy about the lockdown or what did they find difficult to sort of cope with? Um, so if I start with myself, uh, the thing I'm enjoying about the lockdown is being at home with the family. So I really get to see, like we have two dogs, two big loud dogs that you probably hear before this is over. Um, so I get to hang out with them and they sort of, at my little office desk, they come and lay with me and it's like having a little fairy pillow. So they've got really used to the routine of having me or my wife or the family at home and you get to see what they do when you're normally at work so that's been something I've really enjoyed about it um something I've not enjoyed is sort of being confined at home all the time so when I would normally go out for like a, a massive two or three hour walk um I can't really do that now or I'd go exploring different parts of Leicestershire or Loughborough and you know just deciding to go to a walk randomly now it has to be a little bit more calculated and obviously with the lockdown um focus at staying at home and keeping everyone safe so that was my little my two little aspects um so yeah just like check with yourselves and um I guess you can do one at a time and just get your points on the, the good thing and the bad thing really lovely Steve um well for me the good thing is being able to be at home quite a lot because normally I go teaching like five times a week yeah so being at home and uh, not having to stress out and rush home and shove food down my neck and then go back out is definitely a good thing the thing that yeah. I'm not such a fan of is uh, all the social distancing and having to wear a mask <laughs> definitely yes yeah yeah I'm the same I've had such a nightmare I don't know if it's a weird face I have or something or a bigger nose or not nose whatever but even trying to find a mask that fits comfortably that I can bear to wear for more than five minutes is is a challenge yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll be on that one <laughs> uh, does anyone else have any sort of things they've enjoyed or not enjoyed in in that kind of a uh, realm really No, they've not unmuted themselves. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Not a problem. Well, I can move on to our, our next... There you go. Oh, hello. There we got you. <laughs> hello. I can talk oh, yeah. to you again now. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're there. That's all right. Don't worry. Okay. No Where was I... It was Where just was so I? there's no interference while Steve's talking to me. You can unmute yourself to ask stuff. I, I've yeah. just done that. Yeah. Do you want to... Oh, you go next. Okay, I'll go first. Right, as I was saying, as I started to say when I was talking to myself, uh, 
I absolutely love working from home. I, I did start doing that a little bit even before the lockdown. Okay. Um, on, on the days I didn't have meetings, I didn't have to get into work. I'd stop at home um, one or two, maybe three days a week, some, like, some weeks, which was great. It's even oh. better because it saves me um, anything between an hour and a half and two hours a day in traveling into Leicester. Wow. Yeah. Which is absolutely yeah. awesome. So I can do something a bit more useful. Like Dave was saying about dashing out to teach. Well, that two hours a day back in my day means I've got a, ch a really chill sort of day in, in comparison um, to what I was doing. Yeah. And also, a lot like Dave, um, I hate wearing a mask. I really, <laughs> really hate it. It just... Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I, I am not because it's weird now. Because when you, when everyone's got a mask on, which most people do all the time, you've only got that to mm. do. It. So whereas normally, like I'm known for, you know, my expressions. I guess the smiling tends to get a lot of people. So I could be grinning underneath, but you can only really see it with my eyes. And you're yes. having a sort of, you're literally yeah. reading people's eyes now. You, and, you, um, you can't give anyone fake smiles, can you? No. <laughs> You've really got it. They, they can tell because if your eyes aren't squished up, they know it's a face <laughs> on. So it's, you're not getting away with anything. But yeah, it, it's been um, the math side of things is a mm. challenge. Because it, it's taken the fun away because every now and again, I'd like to go out to the, not to the shop shop, but you know, you'll find me like B&Q or, or Wilco. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for being in Wilco for hours and buying any DIY bits of kit available. So you'd yeah. find me in there on a Saturday just picking up random tools. But even now that's my favorite place to go but even now i don't go there as much because it's the mask and not mm -hmm. as fun so yeah yeah i definitely get that is there, is there anything that you find that you don't like but obviously sort of with the lockup side of things i guess it is a mask honestly not really because my working day is exactly the same i'm, I'm on the phone i'm on the computer i'm having yeah. me virtual meetings instead of real meetings <laughs> and, and my actual working day is almost exactly the same i just don't have to travel to get there first yeah um, which is it i and not doing the kind of zoom thing teams thing is not quite as good as having a proper sit down face to face meeting because you you don't get to read the body language and things like that quite as well yeah you, know, you get, you get yeah. whoever's talking on the screen pops up and everyone else is like so small you can't really see what's going on <laughs> um, so you, you, you've got to really listen hard and it's a bit more um, you have to be more focused on what everyone's saying. Yeah. Because there's no yeah. other, you don't, don't really have much in the way of visual cues apart from that. Yeah. And, and it's sort of trying not to, which I'm terrible at, like interrupt someone in the midst of a conversation because yes. it sort yeah. of blocks the, the audio out. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get better at it, but I'm, I'm a nightmare. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we find that pretty difficult. Is there anything else anyone likes? Well, like it's liked or disliked. Or you, I, I think I think Jane's probably different from 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 me. Oh it? yeah, hi Jane. Yeah, what 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 do you I, think? We... Um, I don't mind the mask so much. That doesn't bother me. It's just not being able to go out and not being able to see family. I find yeah. that really really hard. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really hard. I can put yeah. up with the mask just to go shopping, but it's all the other <laughs> stuff. I yeah, people, it, it? Mm. yeah, I can't see people. I don't like that, but yeah, yeah. Like me not seeing people so much. <laughs> I'm happy to sit. I've just got a big stack of books, I'm just going through them one at a time, yeah. find them, buy some more. Well, I don't mind <laughs> not seeing some, you know, some people I don't mind not seeing, but I don't like not to see my family. It's I find yeah. it really, really hard. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're the same, really, because we've got my mum who we're having to sort of or have to make sure she's isolated because she's over 80, she's 85, and she has, has dementia, so there's all that aspect mm -hmm. of things. So the only thing we can really do with it sort of, in, you know, generally when, when she's around is in the garden. She loves having the dogs around, but like you say, it's, it's such a big chain for people that need, like, a routine, you know, like, every day has to be the yeah. same and need to know where you are, what you're doing at any given time. Um, it's so hard to explain to them about, and, and I, I guess it's very similar to to younger children is to try to explain that what you normally would do every day you can't do anymore, and we don't quite know when you can do it. So there, there's all that element of trying to 
explain it on a level that's understandable to them. So yeah, it's not easy at all. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have found it handy, have, well, not handy, but lovely having the pets around. Before mm. we had our two dogs, I was never a, a pet guy, really. It, we, you know, we never would have thought about having pets, but now we've got them, I couldn't imagine it without them, really. Mm. Mm-hmm. really so that that's been a, a great hand but it's oh. nice to have Wyndham at home what well, because he's at home when I come home and I'm not just coming home and there's no one yeah. there so that, <laughs> yeah. that's nice but I, I like it that he works from home that, that's good yeah. Mm. yeah 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 I'm, I much prefer it as well now. I think it's it will definitely be the way a lot of companies will go afterwards yeah. you know when people are like well I can do it at home and it works so yeah majority, mm. and, it, and it says I can't imagine how much fuel it saves people. Like you say, traveling time, um, getting back yeah. and forth is, and, and stress as well, because nobody likes being stuck in. I, I know the, the traffic from our side of town into the center of Leicester is a nightmare at the best of times. So mm. yeah, I can imagine that for sure. Mm. Oh, excellent. Mm. Well, one of the things I thought I'd check with everybody is, obviously I know some, well, pretty much a lot, a lot of yourselves and, and some of the children, and the general hobbies, but I thought I'd check with everybody, see what hobbies people have that they're able to, I guess now indulge a little bit more before it's sort of, you know, you might get the odd weekend to do, if it's gardening or working on your cars or whatever, but is there any hobbies that yourselves are having a bit more chance to do now, being at home than you, you would have before? If I had a hobby, probably yes, but the only hobby <laughs> I've really got is Taekwondo. Um, which is a good one to have yeah. yeah I do taekwondo and I work and I read and I sleep and I do it all again <laughs> I mean some repeat yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and I yeah. like cooking so I've been doing a bit more of that yeah baking oh. time a bit more yes. of that sort it's, of it's not oh, good for the waistline go. it really I was going to say I'm going to have to make a visit on a Saturday when I can have that kind of food <laughs> and uh, yeah. see if I can help you out with it because I'll be glad to <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I can, yeah. How, how about you, Dave? You tend to do mainly a bit of reading yourself. Yeah, that's maybe, me. Or... I'll, um, I'll just do my taekwondo. I'll just, as I say, I've got a big stack in my uh, books in my to be read list, and that, nice. that's me done. Yeah, that's you're it. happy, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I've found it's been easier because I don't tend to read because, um, being dyslexic, the re- reading is almost like a a bigger challenge I do it but it's you know it's a much slower process so mm. for me mm. to get through a book would be probably months if I could stay focused long enough so what mm. I tend to do is listen to a lot of audio books a lot of autobiographies yeah. um one of the most recent ones was uh oh, Obama's book he, he had a, a book out and I've listened to that so that's really fascinating because sometimes when I can combine listening to a book with walking one of the dogs and going on a nice new route that's like a real ideal thing so I think that's that's the hobby I've been able to indulge more and being the big kid I am I do a lot of a lot of radio control model cars yeah so I have quite quite a few of those around and I I probably say for a year at a time I say I'm going to get my car out this weekend I'm going to go drive one of the model cars and I've never done it hardly ever you know like every now and again I'll, I'll do it but with things as they are, been able to take them out and take them for a spin and tinker with them and stuff. So that's that's been nice. That's a nice little hobby. Um, so that's been good fun. Do you, are you yourselves finding you're able to get out for walks a lot more? Because that, that's one thing I find I can do not as much as I want, but I can do more of. It's like it's your one chance to get out of the house, really. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah we haven't. Jane, Jane does. I don't so much. I just yeah. Work. <laughs> <laughs> I just a work off. Yeah, I am a bit of a workaholic. Warm, we'll walk more. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. There's been a couple of really nice warmer days where it's not too hot, mm. where you can get out a bit more, really. So, oh, excellent. Well, I, I thought what I would do is one of the techniques that I've, I've been using is actually, I think it might be my wife, Mandy. She's into, who you may have seen before, into her yoga and meditate so she, she's the calm part of parkour I'm the the high trouble troublemaking one um but I know <laughs> I know sometimes when I get a bit anxious which you tend to do sometimes being at home makes me a little bit more anxious I've been doing box breathing um which I don't know if you guys have heard of or no no ah, right something uh, new I'm gonna try <laughs> so all it is it's just 
focusing on your breathing and they call it box breathing because it, it's, it's essentially, if you imagine sort of the shape of a box, there's four seconds breathing in, then there's four seconds of holding your breath and there's four seconds of breathing out and then four seconds of breathing in. So essentially it's almost like a, you know, a box process. Um, so that's, that's something I've really found because it, it automatically slows you down to, because normally you take a breath in like half, half a second or so, but to really have to sort of breathe in for four and then hold it for four and then breathe out for four. It's difficult because I can imagine if people trying to do it, it's, it's more difficult online, but it, it really does slow you down. So I found sometimes when I'm getting agitated, that's been a, a nice way of sort of calming myself down a little bit, doing the box breathing. And as I say, it's just given that four seconds. So I sort of just count the four seconds in my head, four seconds of holding it, four seconds of letting go, and I just loop back. And normally like three or four, um cycles of that's enough to sort of calm me down in any given situation really so that that's that's been quite a quite a useful thing really o- overall and it's one of those techniques you can do in say like in a queue or in public where you're not having to like sit down on the floor cross your legs and meditate you can't you, know, you can't always do that in the middle of Asda or something so <laughs> it makes it a little bit more practical um day to day really so that that's a, a good thing have, have yourselves been able to obviously it's going to be it's been a big change for yourselves with the training one-to-one and face-to-face have you been able to do a lot a lot of your drills and your disciplines sort of um, at yeah, home we've been trying to obviously a large part of it is um sparring and partner drills but we've yeah. been doing loads of the patterns loads of uh, basics and things Oh, cool. myself when I'm not doing the classes I've got my punch bag and things like that <laughs> kettlebells I've got uh, no. the, the power bag just under the desk there nice, nice. I've got various bits and pieces oh, I've got my focus pad on the desk as well actually nice <laughs> oh, it's got a nice little setup I like that <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that does help because it's, it's like a different way of training but it's nice that you yourselves can still keep it going because we have a lot of people that we work with there. It's even though doing it over Zoom is not, uh, like you say, as interactive as doing it one to one. It it still keeps them active and in, in the process yeah. of knowing you know what to do. And I think if people weren't doing things like Zoom or things like what we do uh, at the moment, when they did come back, they'd be so much more rusty and and sort of disjointed with it so I think it keeps hopefully keeps people sort of a bit more sharp really yeah. yes it's a really good really good discipline so oh excellent excellent are there any questions so far because what I might do next is move on to the bit that's going to get everybody sweaty and hot and exhausted <laughs> it like a plan. I'll have to move the uh, the chair out of the way but it sounds like a plan cool no problem okay so uh, but yeah, so if you have any problems, feel free to adapt the moves and so on. So I've tried to set it out for everybody where it's one simple move, so nothing too extravagant. Um, two, also you can do without any equipment, because I know some people you know, may not have any equipment around and, and also not a lot of space. So ideally this will take up pretty much the shape of your body. So with the exercises we're doing, we'll either be standing up straight or standing rather uh, and then the only other one you'll be sort of on all fours or sort of doing a plank kind of position on the floor so hopefully it won't take up too much actual footprint in space so what I have for you and I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest the times and see how you guys feel about it so we're starting with the classic star jumps for your first move I'll give you a bit of a rundown of the exercises then we've got um, a move called fast feet and that's basically and actually I'll show you because I've it's one of those ones where it's always easier to demo than to uh, try to explain so it's kind of like running on the spot so we, we obviously we've got a normal star jump where you're sort of jumping up and down and then the fast feet are where you're running on the spot really quickly so you're tapping away your feet on the spot 
Then we've got high knees, which again, maybe one of the, the, the routines yourself do, where we're just sort of doing the running motion with your knees coming up and, and tapping them on your hands. Then we've got top, top taps, which are basically, if you imagine you've got sort of a, a small bench or um, like a medicine ball on the ground, and what you want to imagine is tapping on top of that ball. So you're sort of lifting your feet up, almost like doing keep you up, but you're tapping on top of an, an imaginary ball or tapping the wall even is fine, just something physical to make contact with. Then we have the mountain climbers, which will be the ones where you're laying on the floor and basically be laying down. So imagine if I'm laying down here and you'll be lifting your knee up to meet your elbows, but that instead of me being standing up, you'll be laying down doing that. That's a killer. So you are gonna definitely hate me for that. <laughs> and then the final one will be the same position. So again, laying down, but it'll be just be a plank. So I'll just have you hold the plank position with everything nice and solid and squeezed in that kind of angle. And I might be kind to you, make you just do 40 seconds. But if people don't stand out of breath enough, then I might be make you do a minute. It all depends on, on, how, on how everybody sounds. So if that sounds okay for you guys. Yes, I do it. Yeah, make a start. Okay, then. So I've got my faithful stopwatch here. So what I'll do is I'll space or I'll set it up for a minute, sorry, for 40 seconds worth of work time with a rest of a minute in between just to let you recover and then sort of get set up for the next move. And I'll give you a bit of an update on the next move before we start. Okay. So I'll give everyone a few uh, few seconds to get into position or stand in position, I guess, for the first one, mm -hmm. which will be the classic star jumps. That we probably all... Mute everyone so we don't get... Yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So we shall start the star jumps. And if you're all good, we'll start them for 40 seconds now. And I'll just time you guys going along. Lovely, well done, everybody. The time's ticking away, so you're doing really well, really, really well. Good, we're 20 seconds in. So keep the star jumps going. Okay, 10 more seconds left. So blast it out for that last 10 seconds. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Have a little break, have a minute off. Well done. Excellent, well done everybody. So you've got a minute off and then we're going into the fast feet. So that's where you're sort of imaginary running on the spot essentially. So I'll give you a bit of time to recover on those. And if there's any problems, feel free to sort of uh, unmute and come in and let me know. But hopefully it's working okay for you. You can sort of relate to everything there. So we've got about another 30 seconds and we're gonna do 40 seconds of the fast feet. So that fast running move. And when we get to five seconds, I'll give you a countdown. Okay, so it's coming up. The breaks always seem quicker than, no, you always seem to go quicker than the actual exercise bit. Everyone always tells me that. Okay, everybody. So five, four, three, two, one, lovely. And we're just doing that running motion on the spot, the fast feet to get the blood pumping lower down and pumping the arms as well. So we're we'll ticking along on that one. We're 10 seconds in so far. So keep going. You're doing really well. Good. Excellent. 20 more seconds to go. Lovely. Lovely. Keep going. Good, 10 more seconds to go. So we're ticking away really well. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Again, have a break for a minute, well done. Good. And imagine everyone breathing heavy and a little bit out of breath now. <laughs> That's how it should be, well done. So we've got a minute off, a little bit of time to 
relax, get some water if you need to recalibrate. And then the next move we have coming up for another 40 seconds are the high knees. So it's basically where you're sort of doing a high knee run, having your hands about here and sort of tapping your knees with your hands as you're running and doing high knees. So we've got about another 30 seconds left. And we'll start that one. I'm trying to make sure I'm being really honest with you. So I always have this stopwatch with me, which I've had about 20 years, I think. And it's still, I've still not replaced the battery in it, which is crazy. Okay, everybody. So we're coming up to that five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. And the high knees now for 40 seconds. So just pace it out, keep a nice consistent pace. And do what you can, as long as you're moving, that's the main thing. So not a problem. 15 seconds in, doing really well. Good. Okay, we're coming up with 20 seconds in. 25 seconds. So keep going with these ones. These are the, the harder ones to do because they're quite physical and demanding. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Have a break, everybody. Well done. We're getting down though. We've got another minute, another minute's rest. And then this one is the one. I call the toe tap. So if you imagine your sort of feet there, even if you're sort of tapping against the wall or, you know, the sides of the side of the garage, it's just doing that kind of move, just consistently tapping against the wall, just to almost mimic a running motion. Then they call them ball taps, but we'll sort of improvise a little bit on those. So again, we'll go for another 40 seconds of those. And you still have half a minute left, so utilize every second of rest that's what i normally do okay not going too bad okay we're coming up to the five second countdown so five four three two one okay off you go for the the knee taps against the wall or against the imaginary surface just moving from one foot to the other, nice and consistently again. This one's a great, so the ones we've been doing are like a really great overall conditioning exercise, bit for building strength, coordination, and timing as well. And also works up a good sweat. So if you need to get your heart rate up there quickly and uh, consistently in sort of an interval training manner, these are really great for that. Okay, so about another 10 seconds. Count down five, four, three, two, one. Have a break. Wonderful. So a minute off for you guys, a little bit of time to relax and collaborate yourselves. This one or the next two, the final two we have are laying on the floor. We're still going to be using the floor. So the one we have coming up now are the mountain climbers. So you'll essentially be hitting that plank position and you'll just be running your feet. So each knee goes to the same side elbow in that running motion. But you'll be obviously in this, in this position here. But this is quite demanding because you're working against gravity all the way, plus you're doing essentially running as well. So it's quite a challenging one. But if anyone needs to make any input in uh, improvisation, impro Organizations to this one, just let me know and we can work around that. Okay, so coming up in five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. And off you go with the mountain climbers. Just keep a, a nice, consistent pace. If you can go faster, that's great. But remember, we've got about 40 seconds to get to. So a nice, consistent pace is, is fine. And I'll still work up a good sweat. Lovely, well done. We're 20 seconds in, so not far to go now, over halfway. That's really good. Lovely, 10 more seconds to go, everybody. We're getting there. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Have a minute break. Well done.
Excellent. Well done. Now, the next one we've got coming up are the old school traditional planks, which everyone knows. But I just thought I'd check and see how's everyone's breathing is. If I can hear you out of breath enough, I might let you down for 40 seconds, or I'm going to be cool and do a minute. What do people reckon? Um, I think I could probably do a minute. Minute, cool, cool. What about the other side of the gang? You reckon a minute? We'll, we'll be brave and go for a minute. I've, okay. I've, you've not unmuted yourselves, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a, minute, a minute is good, cool. but I'll be doing mine the other way around because my shoulder won't do that. Oh, of course, yes. Yes, not a problem. We can work with that. That's fine. Okay. okay. All right. Well, if you brave soldiers are ready. Hang on. Let me mute us again. Okay. We'll get it up and off we go for one minute of a plank. So, yeah, the secret with this one is... Oddly enough, I found, it's going to sound weird, squeezing your bum and squeezing your abs in nice and tight keeps that sort of firm section. Even squeezing your legs, anything that keeps you sort of super, you know, rigid and flat-ish to a degree. What we find sometimes is when we have people doing planks, their sort of bum lifts a little bit higher, which takes a bit of stress off the move. But if you put it down so you're really flat or as flat as possible, it's more difficult but more effective. So... That's like a little tip, really, for, for people that are newer to doing a plank. Well done. So we've got about another 40, no, not 45 seconds, 15 seconds. We've done 45 seconds so far. Well done. Keep digging in, everybody. I'm going to be cheeky with you. I'm going to make you do a minute and 15 just because everyone sounds too happy and healthy so far. So... A little bit longer to go, so keep holding it in for me, everyone. And I'm pushing you a bit more, but this is good. And we are at five, four, three, two, one. Have a break. That's it. <laughs> we can hear how heavy people are or are not breathing now, possibly. All depending. <laughs> Oh, how did everyone find it? It's weird because I can see me on the screen a lot. So I can, I'm, I'm imagining how people are feeling and breathing at the moment. So. <laughs> if you're trying to speak, you're going to unmute yourselves again. <laughs> I know, this seems a nightmare to get. I, I always keep doing I that. know. I can mute everybody, but I, I can't unmute you. You have to do it. Yeah. Too. Everyone's sort of individual. Yeah, we could, yeah. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, well done. <laughs> Was that okay? Because it, it's hard sort of trying to judge how long to do yeah. it for. I've tried to yeah. sort of keep it some simple yeah. moves for everybody, especially some of the, the youngsters as well, so they're not sort of anything yeah. too complicated. Minute but and a half it, was good. Yeah. Her mind yeah. is struggling for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's one of my little code normally when I've got my clients and I say okay we're going to do a minute or something they get a feeling that that means a minute and a half or whatever so you guys did really well yeah, I can good. normally get people when, they, when they're in the position that they can't argue with me which a plank is a good thing to do <laughs> for that one so <laughs> they just have to do it and hope it works okay well, that's really good well done excellent I just thought I'd check if anyone has any other questions or anything else I can help with because I know it's sort of a bit different hopefully when, the, when the, the group get to watch this, it's some good tips overall, but just wondering if there's anything else, um, any other questions or anything that I can help with really, or even anything to talk about. Hmm. <laughs> now I'll put you guys on the spot properly now. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, if you were going to go jogging, mm -hmm. um, what sort of distance would you recommend a sort of a regular you know, for a beginner. Like a, a regular thing. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I mean, oddly enough, for somebody just beginning out and getting used to it, even going for like maybe a mile jog is good. So what I tended to do when I first started jogging and trying to get even into the idea of it, and I was not doing it at all, I literally would jog, say, in my street, obviously you have the um, 
the, the light poles X amount of distances apart. So I would sort of get myself and I'd say, okay, even though I can't jog and I can only do a short period of time, I'm going to jog from this light post to the light post in the next street, you know, which might be six light posts um, ahead, jog there and then jog back or jog there and walk back. So with me, I, I built it up really slowly. I just, you know, got to the stage where I could jog there, jog back and then thought, you know what, I'm going to try going around the block and then two times around the block and so on. And then the mileage will increase. But yeah, I think it's, I think if you're just starting out, just try to do it in a comfortable way. So you're not coming back exhausted and dreading going again. You come back at that stage where you've got a bit of a high, you think, oh, I did really well sort of thing. And then at least the next time you look forward to it as opposed to coming back thinking, oh, that was only a mile and I got to do two miles next time. And this is too much, I'm out of it. So yes, I thought I'd, I'd probably start it really small. Even if you are new to jogging at all, just go from lamppost to lamppost. And if you're a bit more experienced with it, maybe start with a mile, get back nice and confident and build up your confidence in what you can do. Nice. A good variation on that is if you do um, jog to a lamppost, walk to the next one, jog to the next one, walk to the next one. And as you get exactly. fitter, you can, sp- you can pick the speed up between the lampposts when you're running. Yeah. And then you, yeah, can go, then, then you can progress to jogging between them and sprinting and jogging and sprinting if you yeah. start with uh, walking and jogging. Uh, so yeah, it's a, re- a really good tip because sometimes, especially when either you've not done it for a while or it's something new altogether, it can feel real daunting because you see people putting down, oh, I've jogged six miles, I've ran like 8K, and like, wow, that's a, that's a lot of distance to, to cover when you've not done it before. So yeah, like you say, just a, a jog and a sprint, jog and a sprint, does a lot of good for you. And, and the fact that you're sort of alternating it with sort of slower state with a, a sprint interval as well is also a really good way of conditioning mm-hmm. your system. So yeah, that's really cool. Lovely. Um, <laughs> another question I've got, I've not got it to hand at the minute, but what's, yeah. I might have asked this before, but I use this as an, as my kettlebell. <laughs> <laughs> so what would be a good all over exercise to do with a kettlebell? I Maybe would say the exercises. Yeah, two exercises. So I would say the king of exercises for kettlebells, as far as sort of conditioning, getting all your muscles working in your body, you know, hitting everything in a very short period of time, would be kettlebell swings, which okay. I think you may be familiar with. So but do, do uh, yeah, that. to 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 do that. So if you've got the one, the the kettlebell itself, just to maybe give you a bit of a physical demonstration on a few nuances. Some people, what you'll find is when they're doing the kettlebell swing, they'll come and do the hinge okay, but they may pull the kettlebell up really high, you know, almost using your arms. So the best thing to do is if when you are coming down from the bottom, is to almost flick with your thighs. And if your kettlebells raise up that high, that's as high as you take them. So your arms are quite loose. Your arms are just an attachment. Only shoulder high. Yeah, yeah. Some people you'll see will bring it up really high, which you can do, but I think for for the combination of that exercise, the sort of power, endurance, stamina, and focusing on the main parts of your body, that's the best way to do it. So you really are sort of using your, <clears throat> so you're using your thighs as your sort of power point. So your, your, your arms or your, um, yeah, your arms are gonna sort of touch your thighs, but it's like you're flicking up from your thighs and that's gonna probably bring your arms about to there. And with your arms are nice and relaxed, and they're literally just a way of attaching the kettlebell to, to your body as, as a swinging motion. So I'd probably say that's the, a really good one overall. If you only had so many minutes and a kettlebell to you, that's, that's a great one to do. And I would say another really good one kettlebell-wise is to do kettlebell squats uh, or gob- goblet squats. And that's where you're sort of holding the kettlebell by, say, the horns at the side, for instance. Oh and then you're squatting down. But what you'll tend to do with these ones is your squat position, your legs will be a little bit wider. So when you squat down, your elbows will actually go in between your legs. So you're getting a really nice low squat. Okay. And then you're coming up nice and nice and slowly coming up and then squeezing your bum, squeezing your abs, everything squeezing, and then you're squatting back down. So with the use of the kettlebell, you can come down much deeper than a normal squat, say with a, a barbell, and you, yeah. you know your, your body's going to tend to be much more upright and proud, but you're able to get down a lot further. So it can be a great help in sort of loosening up the hamstrings, sort of the the the, the posterior 
chain of the body just to loosen it up a lot more than having to balance your body with a you know with a a, a barbell on the back of your your shoulders so yeah. that's again a really really nice relatively easy one but one that you can work on to really fin- finesse your technique as well as you get more confident lovely <laughs> i've got one other question that i can yeah. think of and that's um to the other bit of kit that i've got which is the power bag or the sandbag yes um I've seen, I've, I've done both variations of this. I've seen people on hands and knees and then putting yeah. it through to one side. Is oh, it, yes. is it better to sort of snatch it and sort of lift it off the ground slightly or to constantly pull it at a constant speed? Yeah, I would say for sort of avoiding injury and stability wise I always prefer just to drag it along so as you're you're sort of climbing over and it's behind you just drag it along that floor with your strength and then carry on and then drag it again that way you're getting a resistance to the floor and your muscles know what to expect rather than if you if you say grab it and you toss it up all it takes is you to be in a slightly different angle a little bit extra fatigue than you could you know pull um, a shoulder muscle or, or pull a muscle overall so Would I think they also apply to if it was if I was here and I was pulling it laterally across like that yeah yeah I yeah. would I would still make it that nice long drawn out pull going across and then that drawn out pull going across just so it's a nice consistent I guess like a consistent resistance really mm. that you're not trying to surprise your body with but yeah that's a good a good move that one is yeah <laughs> Okay, that's that's me with my question. Anyone else got any questions? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. No, fine. No questions. Oh, cool. Yeah. No problem. I know it's always hard to think of them when it's just here in one. <laughs> in one, yeah. I'm a nightmare for that. But yeah, no. But obviously, if I can help with anything else, hopefully it was a bit entertaining for you guys, and you know, a little bit of fun with the training. And so of on. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, I really enjoy it. Oh, thank you. I joined you into the the Charmwood Taekwondo members group on Facebook, Steve. So I'll, nice. I'll make people aware of that. And if they've got any fitness or you know that sort of questions, I'll uh, direct yeah. them to you. Yeah, oh, please yes. do that. I'll yeah. be honoured. Yeah, really I unmute. No, you're talking. Oh, we got you. <laughs> yeah, just about food, um, really. What would be the best thing? to be eating before you did your workout. And then again, afterwards, you know, to put back like sort of, you know, protein and, and things like that back into your muscles yeah. and everything. Yeah. Well, I would say depending on, on the diet people have, you know, obviously what people like to eat generally, yeah. because one, one of the, the worst things you can do is having something too heavy before training, because yeah. then you just feel like you're, well, obviously your yeah. body's still digesting the food and, and it gets rerouted there. So I tend to find, for me, if I need something as a bit of a, an energy boost before training, I might have something like some peanut butter, oddly enough, um, even if you mix it with a bit of chocolate, if that helps, or some, say, uh, yoghurt-covered raisins or peanuts, just a handful of those, a bit of yoghurt as well, yeah. um, because it's nice and light. You'll still get some protein, some amino acids in to help you with the training, but you're not having anything that's too demanding on your digestive system that's going to take a lot of energy and, and, and blood to digest so something nice and light like that and also it's going to release the energy uh, relatively quickly um, and I think after training it's kind of the fun bit where you can get away with you know uh, say a bit of sugar but, but a bit of something um, that's going to digest faster so yeah. sometimes I recommend people may have like some rice and chicken or rice and salmon it's always a, a great one to go with uh, maybe some couscous, couscous as an option. Uh, just something that's going to, again, give you the protein, give you some fiber, but not too much. And also give you a little bit of carbs as well. So yeah. it's going help to help you to replenish the energy you use in your training. Yeah. Okay. Would like a, a banana and a yogurt before training, that would be good. Yeah, yeah. that would be good. Yeah, if, if, if people can, uh, are good with bananas, chopped up into some yogurt ideal because it's not a big strain on your digestive system yogurt is almost like essentially partly digested in its own 
stay. So yeah, that's a great thing to have. It's nice and light and it's enough to fuel you through the system, through the workout and not put too much of a demand on the system. Mm. Yes. Yeah. You got uh, any questions? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That, that's good. We like salmon and we yeah. like chicken. I don't worry about yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. James, James, eat it. I eat what I'm given. Oh, that's the best way. In fact, that's the only way. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, I'm gonna. Do... <laughs> that's the best no, way to keep the food coming in. The yeah. downside of that is I don't always get what I want. <laughs> I don't get a lot of sugary stuff and junk food. Which is a bit yeah. of a shame, really. That's my favourite. <laughs> yeah I, I get away to have a little bit of treats on a Saturday so I always look forward mm. to a Saturday and I I'm sort of picking out I'm like okay this is what I'm gonna have this week and that's next week so <laughs> yeah but otherwise it's pretty like very much like yourself it's pretty much what I you know what I have and I, I normally I'm really weird because I normally stick with something until I get bored of it and then go on to something else but salmon yeah. always seems to be in the mix somewhere yeah yes mm. we like salmon yeah. it's really. good isn't it anything meat yeah. fish will do yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, as a kid, I hated salmon. My mum and dad used to have to <laughs> force me to have it. But now, if, there's, if there was ever one go-to for a meal, it would be mm -hmm. salmon with whatever else, or even salmon by itself yeah. if I had to. So, yeah, it's that's a really me. good choice. I, yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew I liked you. That's the reason why. Right <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. But, yeah, so if I can help yourselves or the team with anything else it would be a pleasure so not a problem at all nice one thank excellent you. <laughs> yeah thank you any anyone got oh. any final questions uh, no, at all, no, no, no. all good yeah all good, good. Yeah. okay in yeah. that case excellent. um shall we call it a day mm -hmm. cool um, we've uh, we've sort of borrowed the uh the atkda's main zoom meeting for this because i thought we were going to have more people so I got it. I sort of got it booked for an hour. So <laughs> even though it's on my Zoom, I set it up. But yeah. that's because uh, Master McNally is a bit of a technophobe. Lovely. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. It was good. Enjoyed yeah, that. Thank you. Good, yeah. Oh, when, when you guys are welcome. Thank you. you. When we're Thank out of you. lockdown, we'll have you back over for a proper visit. Oh, lovely. I, I love working with you guys and the kids are lovely. So anytime I'll bring, mm. I'll bring some more tools of torture. We've got a few more yeah. bits in Excellent. the park, in, in the gym. So I'll bring some more of those. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Oh, you guys Thank are you. welcome. Thank you. No problem. Bye. You guys Bye -bye. take Bye -bye. care, everybody. See you Bye. later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.